after a delicious lunch i hope everybody is here and uh, presenters has the task to keep the eyes on you right so the session uh, today we have now is the ct and science education we have four uh, abstracts coming up in this session uh, the first i would like to request shweta bhamre and divya roy from city pride school negdi the title of the abstract is play with the ray Good afternoon to one and all present here. My name is Shweta Bhamre and she is my co-presenter Miss Divya Roy. We are from City Pride School Nigdi and will be presenting a game Play with the Ray. We all being teachers come across many topics which students find difficult and lose interest if these topics are taught in a conventional way. We both have been teaching science for the last 8 years. we come across one such topic that is ray diagrams in physics this topic is part of class 10th science textbook they have total 16 cases of image formation using mirrors and lenses for different positions of object as there are in total 16 cases students find it difficult to learn all these cases to draw all these ray diagrams as they fail to understand the basic rules for drawing the ray diagrams hence we have designed a game and most importantly it is an outdoor game which makes the understanding of ray diagrams very clear to the students and it develops interest of students as it is an outdoor game so before before introducing the game we explain them the basic concepts like focus principal axis focal length radius of curvature on the ground and then we introduce this game i request my co presenter to explain how this game is to be played good afternoon everybody my name is divya roy i'm going to explain how the game is to be played and how all the four all the uh, steps of uh, computational thinking are followed while designing this game as children they are already having the prerequisite knowledge we ask the children to uh, mark center of curvature principal axis focus focal length on the ground taking the suitable distance here we are decomposing the concept into smaller parts the class of 40 will be divided into four groups 10 members in each team one team gives challenge to another team say for example i am the member of team a and i won the toss i'll give challenge to shweta which is a member of team b mentioning two points what will be the position of object and second is what type of mirror or lens you are going to take say i'm giving challenge to shweta you take uh, concave mirror and position of object is at center of curvature now shweta and her team is going to discuss and arrange herself as required for the given case of image formation the students are going to use critical thinking to choose the correct laws for image formation for example if the ray is passing parallel to the principal axis it should pass through the focus after getting reflected and refra or refracted so students they are using different colored ribbons to show the different rays of light and the two students they run holding the colored ribbons following the correct pattern in order to show the correct path of light when both the ribbons they meet we get a point of intersection and that is representing the point of image formation the other member of the team will bring the image and place it there once it is done all the parts of the ray diagram will be labeled choosing the correct flash card once everything is done the opposing team will come forward and they are going to ask some questions like what will be the nature of image what would be the position and size of the image 
the other team member they use logical thinking to answer and to identify the nature position and size of the image the opposing team will accept their answers and they are going to uh, refer the reference table in order to tell whether the answer is wrong or right if the answer is correct they will be awarded by 10 points and in this way evaluation is done okay uh, let us now talk about the impact of this game uh, see when uh, nikhil sir or any of the organizers when they announce lunch break or tea break we all get happy right so all the students across the world they have one common interest they all love to be on the ground they all love sports spirit because see for this particular game we have many simulations but we wanted this to be an outdoor game so that they would love to go on ground and play this particular game and yes we have achieved this target the resistance to learn such complex concept became completely zero after introducing this game before introducing this game 50% of the students in the class were able to draw the ray diagrams correctly but after implementing this game now 80% of the students they are able to draw the ray diagrams correctly in their notebooks and question paper analysis shows that most of the students they attempted questions based on the ray diagrams next important point is that we could see the shift in our role from teachers to facilitators because this particular game is, is uh, emphasizes on student led learning which is very very important it also gives scope to creativity and along with the all computational thinking skills it also inculcates team building skills and time management skills in a student so which we find as very important thing we are planning to uh, build more such games to teach other uh, critical concepts and yes definitely uh, this would be uh, helpful to conclude i would like to say following all the steps of computational thinking made our children to underst understand the concept of ray diagram thoroughly and we could see the shift from rote learning to concept building in a joyful way thank you so much i think that's a wonderful idea learning science through gamification any question okay big round of uh, there is a one question Yes, uh, the steps of CT are being followed in this uh, activity. Already children, they know that they have the prerequisite knowledge that what is focus, focal length, center of curvature. So it is a decomposition of concept. The, when they are playing on the ground, they, the concepts are uh, de uh, decomposed. And then while playing, they are again, uh, they, they are uniting the concept in order to understand it. Second thing, when they are making the pattern, when the children are running, holding the ribbons, in order to follow the correct laws of image formation, at that time, the children, they are understanding the pattern recognition and algorithmic thinking. And after once uh, I told the challenge will be given by the other team, the other opposing team are asking questions. And if they are able to answer, then only they will get the 10 points and your evalu evaluation is done. Thank you. Uh, we have the next presenter, Vrishali Borkar from School of Scholars, Yavatmal. And her abstract is Developing City Skills Through Projects in Science.
गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज एंड माई डियर फ्रेंड्स माई नेम इज़ वृशाली बोरकर आई एम प्रेजेंटिंग द पेपर अंडर द टाइटल डेवलपिंग सिटी स्किल्स थ्रू प्रोजेक्ट्स इन साइंस एंड द टॉपिक ऑफ माई प्रोजेक्ट वॉज कंपेरिंग महाराष्ट्र एंड ओडिशा थाली जर्नी थ्रू अ बैलेंस डाइट सो एंड इट वॉज डन बाय द स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास सिक्स as we all know that subject enrichment activity is the integral part of the ncert curriculum and it is mandatory for all the teachers to conduct it but the way in which i conducted this activity uh, was different as i integrated multi disciplines um, in my project uh, such as uh, cultural studies nutrition and computational thinking skills so this provides an engaging and interactive learning experience to the students so these were some of the objectives of my project uh, to observe the pattern dietary pattern and the reasons behind the difference in the thalis of both the states then they have to do the comparative study and to create the various interesting diet thalis so uh, students were aware about the balanced diet and the nutrients present in the food but some challenges were there in front of the students like uh, understanding the cultural diversity and nutritional analysis was really challenging for them then uh, it was time consuming as the data depends on the various factors like culture geographical conditions and nutrition tradition and so on so i thought to convert this as a long term investigatory project uh, for term 1 and uh, this is how i integrated city skills in my project to think and analyze the data to create thali plans considering the constraints and to look into the different combinations to come up with the multiple plans in uh, creating the thali and this was the flow of the project so students collected data from the various sources of staple food of uh, maharashtra and odisha then uh, they have collected the information of the regular food served in both the states with that they have to search or collect the data like special dishes prepared during the festivals so then ma'am next from the above data they listed and sorted the different food items and famous dishes of maharashtra and odisha considering the uh, festival season and culture for example traditional food of maharashtra is puran poli and of odisha is uh, chinna poda during summer uh, pakhal bhata is prepared in odisha while in maharashtra sattu is prepared to beat the heat of the sun so this is how they made the graphic organizers and they uh, sorted the uh, dishes ma'am next after then uh, the, after the follow up uh, session then after the follow up session group discussion was conducted and uh, they have to make the list of the Uh, commonly used ingredients and the different nu nutri uh, ingredients of both the states with the reason with that they have to investigate the nutrients present uh, in those dishes so two weeks were given as the preparation time for the students then in the next follow up session they came up with these observations and findings that uh, what is the cultural influence and coastal influence was there um, for the difference and uh, they have searched that puran po poli is rich in proteins while uh, dalma is rich in again proteins and uh, paratha is rich in carbohydrates ma'am next so this is how they have uh, made the graphic organizers of the nutrients present which nutrients are present in uh, which dish and they have made this venn diagram to show the commonly used ingredients and the different in ingredients ma'am next now this is a time to create a balanced diet a uh, thali so the task was given to the students to create a well balanced thali and present it uh, with the reasons behind selecting that food item 
so uh, the students come up uh, with the variations of the thalis ma'am next please so here abstraction help them uh, to design a balanced diet thali and uh, i have provided them the um, a standard diet plan so according to that they have designed their own uh, diet thali using the different uh, food items they pick out the different food items or the dishes from the list and using the different combinations they prepared a thali for uh, maharashtra a thali for uh, uh, odisha and some of them they created the thali for elder and younger ones some students thought beyond the frame and they created a thali a blended thali with the food items of uh, maharashtra and odisha so uh, in this way the computational thinking skills make them think and make them uh, uh, creative then after that this project was uh, evaluated assessed by using the rubrics ma'am previous one yes ma'am uh, the rubrics of the c activity so in this way uh, computational thinking skills enhances the learning of the students and this uh, is the impact since they have already learned basics of computational thinking skills in other subjects this project gave them hand on experience of implementing city skills in science thank you thank you so much and uh, special thanks to my gurus geeta ma'am and uh, kritika ma'am sonia ma'am and uh, sunita ma'am thank you so much we have next presentation which is online by r ramansa ramansa mansa it is okay r mansa from prakashini uh, the title is observation observation of venation in plants good morning all of you i am prakashini ravi kumar working as tgt biological science in dr p r ambedkar gurugulam kumar devam kovuru east godavari andhra pradesh my special thanks to cdis team for giving me this opportunity to share my views regarding computational thinking in science we know very well science nothing but knowledge the word science comes from a latin word scientia scientia means knowledge how we get this knowledge just by observing our nature by the observation keen observation of nature we get some information and later on because of the discoveries and inventions of the scientist these observations are become become proved by conducting the experiments actually science is of two different types observational science experimental science observational science means there is no need of any laboratory just the student will have a direct contact with the nature by using his five senses he get the information and the next one is experimental science in this we need a particular laboratory we need some need some instruments we need some measurements units we need to do this experimental science for primary children observational science is very useful to get the information for example if we are learning the students the part of a leaf or types of venation or any other small topics we ask them to collect the leaves or we ask them to collect the plants when they are collecting the plants they will understand the parts of the plant the parts of the leaf and they will observe all the things 
are all the parts what are present in the leaf or a plant then they can try to understand what is the use of the particular part and also we ask them to make a tabular form we will give some tabular form with a set in columns so we ask them to fill the set in columns by observing the particular plant so computational thinking is very much useful for primary students and also upper primary and high school students to observe the things we will give some tabular forms with a set and instructions so that they will collect the data and we may take also any other some example for example family budget so if teacher gives an assignment write about a family budget and compare with your other students then the student collect the all family budgets of his friends and he will make into a pie chart or a graph and he will compare it so here we don't give any instruction we don't explain anything just by the using of this computational thinking they are understanding what is the main theme of the concept so in this way computational thinking is very useful in observational science especially for students to learn the things in a better way so they are doing their uh, own they are doing their own without any instructions from the from the teachers and they can understand well and they can remember well and they apply these methods in their other learning process also in this way computational thinking is very very useful for the students to learn science thank you all thank you now she is not not available on zoom so we cannot ask any questions We'll move on to the next presentation uh, that is by AP Swari School, P. Zhashi Lakshmi and her topic is Adoption of Plants. That is also online. Can we have video? to the all teachers who are present here on the occasion of Pune along with the committee members of CT. I am very much glad to present my PPT on adaption of plants to the children on the occasion of National Conference on My name is Koko Jansi Lakshmi working in APSWRS Singarai Kunda. We have around 670 children in our school. I am a science teacher and we are we have two, two, two teachers working on computational thinking we don't have separate periods for thinking, but teachers are try to implement thinking on classroom subjects today i am going to discussing about the concept of adoption of plants to the children the main aim of this concept is to inform the students the importance of plants and the struggle faced by the farmers during the pharmacy. Going to activity implementation, it is a great way to introduce the adoption of plant concept in the schools with the computational thinking process to engage students in classrooms, learnings about the natural world and develop their skills. Generally, the computational thinking involves breaking down computational uh, thinking involves breaking down the complex problems into smaller, more manageable parts and using logical thinking to solve them. For the implementation, firstly we have identify and categorizing plants. Students are instructed to identify and categorizing plants depends upon their size, color, shape and leaf and roots etc. Understanding plant growth by the adoption of plants, they can understand the growth of the plant day by day by the clear observation. Analysis of plant data. Plant data was analyzed by the growth of the plant and fruits and the nutrients observed by the plant by the soil. 
by using proper care and uses of the fertilizers. Designing plant experiment. Students are instructed to test the presence of carbohydrates proteins in the plant by the experiment. Going to challenges and variation. Limited access to the technology. Not all schools may have access to the necessary technology such as computers, laptops, sensors and software needed to teach computational thinking. For this, we can use unused laptops got repaired and additional equipment taken from the ATL. Second one, students' engagement. While some of the students may be naturally interested in the plans, concept and computational thinking, others may not be as engaged. But after this implementation of project, students are actively participated and enjoying the environment. Third one, time constraint. So, integrating computational thinking into the classroom may require additional time and resources for the lesson planning, implementation and assessment finally and also evaluation. But after this concept, children are uh, using their comfortable time to adopt the plans to enjoy the nature. Limited teacher training. Many teachers may not have experience or training in computational thinking or the plant concept. But after this implementation of adoption of plant in, uh, plant in school, the teachers are enjoyed and try to using uh, computational thinking, thinking in classroom subjects. Finally, cost. Incorporating technology and equipment can be expensive and so schools may need to find uh, creative ways to fund these resources. But, uh, uh, but uh, in our school, we almost try to do this with available resources of low cost and the uh, uh, equipment is uh, uh, gained by the ATL. Have some of the pictures of students that categorizing the plant leaves, food crafting. We have we also having some of the pics of plantation. And the district coordinator of Prakasam district, Srimati Jaya Madam Gar. The current principal of our institution, Srimati Ramadevi Madam Gar, involving in plantation along with the children. They are enjoying the beauty of the nature. Coming to impact slide, by using in adoption of the plants, the students are identifying the patterns like taproot system and fiber root system. They are classifying the venation of the leaves by critical thinking. Uh, the skills of like accuracy, systematic listening, reasoning skills also improve. They feel responsible towards the adoption of the plants. They identify the values of food because we got food from the plant so they feel responsible. And also the students technically updated like they are using sensors to protect plants, sprinklers for watering etc. By this communication skills among the students will be improved by gathering how to elaborate the adoption of the plants and how to increase the plantation by using grafting, ground layering, roots, etc. Especially I observed in the classroom uh, the skills like curiosity, engagement, excitement, problem solving, mindset, empowerment, sense of responsibility, learning, transfer, observational skills, sense of achievement and environmental awareness, etc. are improved in the classroom environment. And these are the main uh, impacts that I observed by using this thinking in adoption of the plants. They are enjoying the nature and enjoying the learning also. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity, especially for CT team and all the teachers who are present here. Our congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ma'am Lakshmi is available online if you wish to ask any question. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon to all of you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Any question? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshmi, ma'am. 
and thank you all of yes, you ma'am good afternoon please good afternoon so there is no question for you yes ma'am uh, voice very low ah we don't have any question for you here okay, okay. thank you much thank you so much for joining so thank yes, you all thank of you thank you so much and i am also thanking you sonia ma'am thank you so much for your support yeah thank you congratulations to all teachers thank you. So here we end up with the uh, CT and science segment. Next is we have uh, the CT and languages. Over to Pratiksha, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, Geeta. And next we have presentations under the topic CT and languages. We have three presentations over here. Uh, first I call upon uh, Snehal Sahastrabuddhe Kulkarni. Her topic is Sanskrit Bhashetil Ucharana Se Mahatva. गुड आफ्टरनून इथे जमलेला सर्व माननीय आदरणीय व्यासपीठ आणि जमलेले सगळे परीक्षक तसेच प्रे प्रेझेंटर्स यांना माझा नमस्कार मी स्नेहल सहस्रबुद्धे कुलकर्णी डॉक्टर कलमाडी शामराव हायस्कूलमध्ये शिक्षिकेचं काम करत असून आमच्या शाळेमध्ये दोन हजार सोळापासून सी टीचा प सी टीच्या कम्प्युटेशनल थिंकिंग हा उपक्रम राबवला जातो यामध्ये असणारे पाटन रेकग्नेजन अल्गोरिदम त्याचबरोबर डी कम्पोजिशन या ज्या टर्म्स आहेत त्यांचा वापर करून मी संस्कृत भाषेमध्ये उच्चारणाला असलेले महत्त्व मुलांना समजवून देण्याचा प्रयत्न केलेला आहे ही माझी अनुक्रमणिका आहे यामध्ये प्रथम आपण संस्कृत भाषेबद्दल जाणून घेऊयात संस्कृत ही आपली अतिशय प्रचीन प्राचीन भाषा आहे आणि सर्व भाषांची जननी असं सुद्धा तिला म्हटलं जातं त्याच आणि अतिशय सुसूत्र अशी असलेली ही भाषा आहे की प्रत्येक शब्दाला इथे सूत्रबद्ध रचना आहे आणि या रचनेच्या आधारेच आपण ती भाषा बोलल्यानंतर त्याच्यामध्ये कोणत्याही प्रकारचं जमलिंग गोंधळ होत नाही आणि आपल्याला अर्थबोध हा चांगला होतो तसंच सगळ्यात महत्त्वाचं म्हणजे संस्कृत भाषा ही फोनेटिक लँग्वेज म्हणून ओळखली जाते फोनेटिक याचा अर्थ जसं आपण उच्चारण करतो त्याच पद्धतीमध्ये आपण ती लिहितो त्यामुळे संस्कृतमध्ये उच्चारणाला किंवा प्रोनाउन्सिएशनला अनन्यसाधारण महत्त्व आहे जर आपलं उच्चारण चुकलं तर अर्थबोध हा पूर्णपणे वेगळा होतो उलट होतो कधी किंवा आपल्याला जे सांगायचं आहे ते समोरच्याला सुस्पष्ट आणि शुद्ध स्वरूपात कळत नाही मग आता हे करत असताना मी काय केलं ॲक्टिव्हिटी घेतली त्यामध्ये मॅम नेक्स्ट लाईव्ह इथे पूर्वतयारीमध्ये मुलांना वर्णमाला ही माहिती आहे पूर्वज्ञात असलेल्या वर्णमालेचं मी उच्चारण करून घेतलं आणि मग चर्चा करत असताना आपण बोलतो सगळेच वय वर्ष दीड असल्यापासून आपण बोलायला शिकतो आपली मातृभाषा पण बोलणं आणि उच्चारण याच्यामध्ये एक प्रोसेस आहे उच्चारण म्हणजे ज्या वेळेस आपण श्वास आणि उच्छवास ब्रीद इन अँड ब्रीद आउट हे करत असताना तो वा जो आपण श्वास आत घेतो तो बाहेर सोडत असताना स्वरयंत्रातून तो बाहेर पडतो आणि त्यानंतर जो साऊंड तयार होतो त्याला स्वर म्हटलं जातं आणि त्या सगळ्यांचं जेव्हा आपण हे करत असताना श्वास बाहेर आपल्या स्वरयंत्रातून येतो त्यावेळेस तो प्रामुख्याने आपल्या तोंडामध्ये मुखामध्ये जीभ दात त्यानंतर कंठ ओठ तालू या सगळ्यांना स्पर्श करतो आपल्या उच्चारणामध्ये जिभेचं आणि वायू वायू म्हणजे श्वास जो आपण सोडतो त्यांचं अनन्यसाधारण महत्त्व आहे हे त्यांना समजावून सांगितलं तुम्ही स्वतही प्रयत्न करू शकता श्वास घ्या तुम्ही रोखून धरा आणि बोलण्याचा प्रयत्न करा कोणताही आवाज आपल्याला काढता येत नाही तसंच तुम्ही आपण लहानपणी सगळ्यांनी केलेलं जीभ धरून आपण बोलायला काही वाक्य सांगतो 
सगळे वर्ण किंवा सगळे शब्द आपल्याला उच्चारता येत नाहीत सेम तुम्ही श्वास सोडून दिला आणि तुम्ही बोलण्याचा प्रयत्न केला तर आपल्याला कोणताही स्वर म्हणा आणि वाक्य शब्द हे उच्चारता येत नाही हे त्यांना समजावून सांगितलं त्यानंतर याच्यामध्ये जी आपली उच्चारण स्थान आहेत आता समजा मी क ख ग घ ग क ख ग घ ग असं म्हणाले तर यामध्ये हे जे वर्ण आहेत त्यांचं उच्चारण स्थान हे कंठ आहे ओके वर्ण मला सगळ्यांना माहिती आहे स्वर आणि व्यंजन अ ते आहा स्वर आहेत क ते ज्ञ ही व्यंजन आहेत तर यामध्ये चर्चा करत असताना मग त्यांचा अनुक्रमे आपण उच्चारत असताना जिभेचे जो शेंडा आहे आपला तो कुठे आपल्या दाताला ओठाला किंवा वरती तालूला स्पर्श करतो त्यावरून त्या वर्णाचं उच्चारण स्थान हे समजतं मग हे करत असताना मी त्यांना सांगितलं जसं क म्हणालात तुम्ही तर आपली जीभ कुठेच लागत नाही क उच्चार करू शकता तुम्ही त्यामध्ये मग असं करत असताना कंठ वर्णे हा आणि मग हे समजून सांगितल्यानंतर त्यांच्याकडून वर्ण मला परत ज्ञा म्हणून घेतली त्यानंतर काही वाक्य वाचायला दिली नेक्स्ट स्लाईड मॅम त्याच्यानंतर त्याच्यामध्ये लक्षात आलेल्या महत्त्वाच्या अशुद्धी निरीक्षणामध्ये की न आणि णचा फरक मोस्टली आपल्याला पाहायला मिळतो तसं पाहायला गेलं तर न जर तुम्ही उच्चारला तर आपली जीभ ही दाताला लागते आणि न जर तुम्ही म्हणायचा झाला तर आपली जीभ ही तालूला लागते आणि त्याचा कर्व होतो ही दोन्ही उच्चारण स्थानं वेगळी आहेत ज्या वेळेस मुलांना उच्चारण स्थानाचं ज्ञान झालं त्यावेळेस त्यांना न आणि न कुठे म्हणायचं आहे हे लक्षात आलं त्यानंतर सगळ्यात महत्त्वाचा प वर्ग मी वेळेअभावी दोनच एक्सप्लेन करते प वर्ग आपल्याकडे मिडियम ऑफ इन्स्ट्रक्शन जी इंग्लिश आहे तर त्याच्यामध्ये प वर्ग जो आहे आपला तो आहे संस्कृतमध्ये सांगी त्याला ओष्ठ आहे प फ ब भ म असा परंतु आपण म्हणताना माध्यम भाषेचा म्हणजेच इंग्लिश भाषेचा प्रभाव त्याच्यामध्ये आपण असं म्हणू शकतो की तिथे आपण फचा उच्चार फ्यू असा करतो जसं आपण म्हणतो फ्रायडे म्हणत नाही फ्रायडे तसंच त्याच पद्धतीने संस्कृतसुद्धा वाचलं जातं मय्यम फलम रोचते असं नाही म्हणतात मय्यम फलम रोचते तर त्याचा जो आपला ओष्ठ जे स्थान आहे त्याऐवजी ते दंत्योष्ठ होतं त्यानंतर विसर्ग आणि अनुस्वार हे मोस्टली बऱ्याच वेळेला उच्चारले जात नाहीत म्हणजे ते विसरून गेले जातात किंवा सोडून दिले जातात मग याच्यामध्ये विचार बोलत असताना आणि विसर्ग आणि अनुस्वारांचं खूप महत्त्वाचं स्थान आहे उच्चारणामध्ये मी काही उदाहरणं देते राम वनम गच्छती याच्यामध्ये राम वन गच्छती असं म्हणालात तर याच्यातून काहीच अर्थबोध होत नाही की ज्याला कोणतीच भाषा माहिती नाही आहे त्यामुळे तिथे राम हा विसर्ग आलाच पाहिजे प्रथमा वनम द्वितीय आलीच पाहिजे अनुस्वार तिथे हा आलाच पाहिजे वनम नंतर त्यानंतर पुढे सीता या हा पती ही राम याच्यामध्ये मग अनुस्वारा अनुस्वार आणि विसर्ग हे स्वराश्रित आहेत मग इथे राम अह झाला विसर्गाचा उच्चार आता सीता या हा सीता या हामध्ये आपण आहा असा उच्चार करावा करावा लागतो आणि हे सगळं करत असताना याच्यातून मुलांना समजल्यानंतर त्यांच्यामध्ये वाचनामध्ये अनेक प्रकारे सुधारणा दिसून आल्या परंतु जशी मला परिणाम चांगले दिसले त्याचबरोबर आव्हानं आली की वेळेचा अभाव त्यानंतर चाळीस विद्यार्थी आणि एक शिक्षिका हे विषम गुणोत्तर आणि बऱ्याच वेळेला माध्यम भाषा आणि मातृभाषेच्या प्रभावामुळे मुलांकडनं रिपिटेशन खूप करून घ्यावं लागलं त्यामुळे धन्यवाद या थँक्यू स्नेहल and i would ju like to just explain it in uh, for the for those who could not understand she explained the importance of pronunciation in sanskrit sanskrit being a very scientific language and people generally make mistakes while pronouncing and that is why students are not able to score even and learn the language so uh, here it was her attempt to uh, correct the sanskrit pronunciation so that children score more yeah right sagan sir dhanyawad Any questions? मी माझे माझ्या शिक्षिका मनीषा गिरोळकर मॅम मेंटॉर प्रतीक्षा मॅम यांचे मनापासून आभार मानते तसेच आमच्या प्रिन्सिपल पल्लवी नाईक मॅम यांचे सुद्धा मनापासून आभार धन्यवाद
So next we have a presentation uh, on CT-based unplugged activities in Sanskrit by Sudhir Kumar Jain from Kendriya Vidyalaya number two, Indore. Thanyavad. Mama Nama Sudhir Kumar Jain. अहम् केंद्रीय विद्यालय क्रमांक दो इंदौर तथा त्रागत तहस्मि संस्कृत भाषा या मैं उन्नाव विदिशा में हिंदी में आ जाऊंगा मैं नहीं तो मेरे विद्यालय में केंद्रीय विद्यालय संगठन वास्तव में भारत सरकार का 1962 में स्थापित किया गया संगठन है जो वस्तुतः जो ट्रांसफरेबल है स्थानांतरणीय जो जॉब करते हैं उन लोगों के मुख्यतः से हैं इसमें मैं क्लास सिक्स टू ट्वेल्थ तक संस्कृत पढ़ाता हूं प्लीज नेक्स्ट स्लाइड और मेरे अंदर विचार आया कि संस्कृत में इसको किस तरीके से इंप्लीमेंट किया जाए तो बहुत सारी चीजें पढ़ते पढ़ते दिमाग में आती जाती हैं यहाँ पर मैंने सबसे पहले एक सबसे छोटे रूप में ट्राई किया था एक धातु होती है संस्कृत में शब्द किसी ने सुना होगा धातु का मतलब एलिमेंट नहीं है यहाँ पर साइंस वाला नहीं लेना धातु का मतलब यहाँ पर है रूट वर्ब्स जो भी संस्कृत में क्रियापद यूज करते हैं फॉर्म ऑफ द वर्ब यूज करते हैं उसका एक रूट होता है दैट रूट उसको हम बोलते हैं धातु अब एक ही धातु होती है संस्कृत में मैम नेक्स्ट करते चलिए थोड़े थोड़े देर में लगभग दो से ज़्यादा धातुएँ हैं और उन 2000 से ज़्यादा धातुएं जो हैं उनसे मिलाकर के हम लाखों क्रियापद बना पाते हैं उसमें दस लकार फिर उसमें आत्मने पद और परस्मेश पद इन सब का यूज़ करके एक एक रूट वर्ड से लाखों शब्द बन जाते हैं बट स्टूडेंट याद कैसे रखें यूज़ कैसे करें समस्या वो आती है और इसलिए बच्चे फिर गलतियाँ करते हैं तो इसके लिए कुछ पैटर्न के हिसाब से इसको सीखा जा सकता है इसलिए प्लीज़ मैम नेक्स्ट कीजिए तो इस विचार के साथ में इस उद्देश्य के साथ में एक योजना बनाई कि एक जैसे जो प्रारूप है उन प्रारूपों को समझने के लिए एक एल्गोरिदम बनाने के लिए बच्चे खुद तैयार कर पाएं इसके लिए मैंने कुछ चार्ट्स सामने दिए बच्चों को मैम प्लीज नेक्स्ट चार्ट्स दिए उन चार्ट्स को बच्चों ने देखा रीड किया उनसे बोला कि भाई आप इसको समझिए इसमें कुछ सिमिलैरिटी मिल रही है तो उसको निकालिए और वो सिमिलैरिटी आपको खोज के रखनी है और कुछ नहीं करना है तो इस तरीके से मैंने तीन धातुएं दी थी भू धातु पट धातु और गम धातु ये आपके सामने वो चार्ट है मैम अब थोड़ा रुकना प्लीज <laughs> ये तीनों चार्ट हैं आप लोग भी अपनी डायरी में एक बार इनमें सिमिलैरिटी निकालने की कोशिश कीजिए शायद तक पीछे तक दिख रहा है क्या हाँ तो इसमें सिमिलैरिटी निकालने की कोशिश कीजिए तीन चार्ट हैं सरल सरल से हैं ये बच्चों के सामने रखे उनको प्रिंटआउट्स निकाल के ग्रुप में डिवाइड करके उनको दिए दिए गए उनने सिमिलैरिटीज निकाली और इसी तरीके का ब्लैंक चौथा चार्ट भी मैंने दिया उसमें उनके लिए एक काम करना था कि इसमें क्या सिमिलैरिटी है वो निकाल के रखना दैट विल बी द एल्गोरिदम एक्चुअली और उसके आधार पर हम और धातुएं जो देंगे उनके हिसाब से उनको नया चार्ट बनाना था तो ये इसमें पैटर्न को अंडरस्टैंड करके एल्गोरिदम बना के हिसाब से काम करने का काम था प्लीज मैम क्लिक कीजिए और ये खाली चार्ट है अब शायद आप में से किसी ने कुछ किया होगा बनाया है किसी ने क्या थोड़ा सा देखिए कुछ समानता समझ में आ रही होगी मैम प्लीज क्लिक बिल्कुल इसी तरीके से जैसे आपने काम किया बच्चों ने ऐसे किया था बच्चों को पंद्रह मिनट दिए थे मैंने और बच्चों ने उसमें से शीट्स में से ये बताया कि इसमें भवती पठती गच्छती इन सब में एक जैसे ती आ रहा है एक ही जगह पे ऐसे ही आगे भवत पठत गच्छत इसमें तह पीछे पीछे आ रहा है तो कहा ठीक है बहुत बढ़िया यही तो उत्तर चाहिए था और बाकी सब जगह पर सेम पैटर्न को देख करके ती तह अंति सी थह थ आमी अवाह आमह ऐसे इस तरीके से सिंपल से उनने पैटर्न खोज लिया पहले हम करते क्या थे कि सिंपल ये पैटर्न कई बार बता देते थे कि इसको याद करो बच्चों इनको याद करके आप ऐसे लगाओ इस बार हमने सीटी का यूज ये किया कि उनसे कहा कि तुम खोज करके तुम पैटर्न निकालो तुम इसमें से एल्गोरिदम बनाओ और तुम इसको यूज करो तो ऐसा करने से बच्चों के लिए आसान हो गया और वो सीख पाए प्लीज नेक्स्ट मैम अब इसमें कठिनाई क्या आई थी ज्यादा कठिनाई नहीं था सरल सा था तो बच्चे कर पाए लेकिन कुछ बच्चे अभी भी रह गए थे सब ने एक से सही नहीं कर पाए कुछ कुछ ने ये किया कि कुछ सही निकाल दिए कुछ गलत भी कर दिए 
तो इस तरीके से क्लासरूम में किया था और वो नेक्स्ट वन प्लीज तो बच्चों के ऊपर प्रभाव में मुख्य दो तीन चीजें नहीं रटने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी उनको आसानी से याद भी होने लगे दो चार बार और पैटर्न खोजे उनको मजा आया सबसे बड़ी बात ये थी संस्कृत पढ़ने में मजा नहीं आता बिकॉज लैंग्वेज एक नई सीखना सिक्स क्लास के लेवल पे आके पहली बार शब्द सुनते हैं और उसके बाद में वो भाषा जो कोई कभी बोलता नहीं है <laughs> भाषा को सीखने के लिए सबसे जरूरी उसकी लिसनिंग और लिसनिंग बच्चों को मिलती नहीं है तो ये एक इशू रहता है तो उसके लिए पैटर्न थोड़ा काम करा थोड़ा मजा आया उनको अच्छा भी लगा चलिए मैम नेक्स्ट प्लीज इसमें भी कुछ सीमाएं थी और कुछ लिमिटेशंस थी लिमिटेशंस में एक तो ये था कि ये मैंने जो बताए थे लट लकार के पैटर्न्स थे लट लकार के पास इसी धातु को हम दूसरे लकार में यूज करें लकार का सिंपल सा मतलब समझ लीजिए टेंस जैसा है आ, वो प्रेजेंट टेंस का था अब पास्ट टेंस वाले फॉर्म्स दिखाएंगे उनको नए पैटर्न आएंगे फ्यूचर के लिए हम लट लकार यूज करते उसको नए पैटर्न आएंगे तो भाई हमारे पास पैटर्न की लंबी लाइन बन जाएगी तो देट वॉज वो भी एक इशू था ये एक लिमिटेशन है इसकी लेकिन फिर और दूसरे इसमें कुछ कुछ वर्ड्स स्पेशल केस आते हैं वो भी हम उसमें एक जैसा समझ करके यूज करते जाएंगे तो वो गलत हो सकते हैं ये थोड़ा सा लिमिटेशन है बट हाँ कुछ तो फायदा जरूर मिलता है और सिटी वाला फायदा पूरा मिलता है कि वो पैटर्न पकड़ना सीखते हैं एल्गोरिदम बनाना सीखते हैं नेक्स्ट मैम प्लीज हमने निष्कर्ष भी यही निकाला कि सीटी के एब्स्ट्रैक्शन एवं पैटर्न की मदद से धातु रूप समझने में आसानी होती है इसके अलावा शब्द रचना प्रत्यय आदि में भी कर पाएंगे प्लीज मैम नेक्स्ट संभावनाएं संभावनाएं कुछ नहीं बस मैम हो गया <laughs> संभावनाएं इसमें और भी टॉपिक्स में की जा सकती है मैं धातु रूप में बनाया से हम शब्द रूप में कर सकते हैं संधियों में कर सकते हैं समाज में कर सकते हैं सो मतलब बहुत सारी चीजें यूज कर सकते हैं अब कोई किसी का प्रश्न हो तो उच्चारण के लिए सही पैटर्न के हिसाब से सर उच्चारण सबसे अच्छा तब होता है जब हम लिसनिंग करते हैं अगर हम सुनते हैं तो हम अच्छा उच्चारण कर पाएंगे और पैटर्न तो आप सुन करके उसको बार बार समझ करके ही कर पाएंगे बार बार उसको सेम वर्ड को या सेम सेंटेंस को सुने तो उसमें से आपको मिलेगी चीजें कोई करेक्ट प्रोनाउंस करता हो काफ़ी चीज़ें मैं देखता हूँ स्कूल्स में भी कई बार छूट जाती हैं हिंदी के अंग अह उसका उच्चारण कभी गलत गलत भी हो जाते हैं और कुछ सर ये जो पैटर्न आपने बताया है हाँ। जब हम सिक्स क्लास सर इधर जब हाँ। हम सिक्स क्लास में थे तभी हमें पैटर्न बताया गया था लेकिन ये सिटी है हमने अब समझा हमें बता दिया तभी गया था सिक्स क्लास में कि ती ता तो लगा के इस तरह शब्द रूप आप धातु के रूप याद कर सकते हैं लेकिन कंपटेशनल थिंकिंग मैं भी सीटी के कर लिया शायद हाँ, सीटी के सीटी के क्लास अटेंड करने के पहले जो दो दिन का कोर्स किया था उसके पहले मैं भी ऐसे बता देता था सिंपल से इसमें सीटी का पॉइंट इतना है कि बच्चों को देख करके ऑब्जर्व करना है ऑब्जर्व करके उसमें से निकालना है क्या पैटर्न है पैटर्न फाइंड करके उसका अपने हिसाब से उसको निकाल के रखना है पहले हमने बोला था अब बच्चे ने बोला है अंतर इतना है थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच I think he needs a big round of applause. So we have one more presentation under CTN languages. It's uh, Jai Shri Narayan Kar, Muhavro ko samajna aur unka prayog from Dr. Shamrao Kalmadi High School. गुड आफ्टरनून मैं जय श्री नारायण का डॉक्टर कलमाड़ी हाई स्कूल से आ, पिछले छः सालों से मैं इस पाठशाला में पढ़ा रही हूँ मेरा विषय हिंदी है और 2016 से हमारी पाठशाला कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग का प्रयोग जो है हमारे स्कूल में कर रही है शुरू शुरू में हमारी पाठशाला सिर्फ कंप्यूटर्स इसमें ही कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग का प्रयोग करती थी लेकिन धीरे धीरे आगे बढ़ते बढ़ते हमारे बाकी सब बाकी विषयों में भी कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग का प्रयोग जो है वो करना शुरू किया इसीलिए आज मैं आपके सामने हिंदी हिंदी में मुहावरे उनका प्रयोग कैसे किया जाता है कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग का प्रयोग करके ये मैं आपको समझाऊंगी नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट मैम तो 
तो पहले मुहावरे क्या है मुहावरे एक ऐसा वाक्यांश होता है जो अपने साधारण अर्थ को छोड़कर किसी विशेष अर्थ को प्रकट करता है जैसे उदाहरण के लिए देखिए कान पर जू रहना कितना सुनने में अटपटा सा लगता है लेकिन जो सामान्य अर्थ है वो लिए बिना अगर हम उसका विशेष अर्थ लेंगे तो अनसुना करना तो इस तरह मुहावरे जो है उसका सामान्य अर्थ प्रकट न करके कुछ विशेष अर्थ प्रकट करने के लिए होते हैं मुहावरों का उपयोग पूर्ण मुहावरे पूर्ण रूप से स्वतंत्र नहीं होते वे वाक्य का सौंदर्य बढ़ाने के लिए उनका प्रयोग किया जाता है भाषा को आकर्षक प्रभावपूर्ण तथा रोचक बनाने के लिए मुहावरे इस्तेमाल करते कम शब्दों में बहुत कुछ कहने के लिए मुहावरे और अपने मन के भावों को या विचारों को प्रकट करने के लिए मुहावरे इस्तेमाल किए जाते हैं नेक्स्ट मैम तो इसके लिए मैंने कक्षा सातवीं का चयन किया कक्षा में त्रयालीस बच्चे थे और मैंने चार गुटों में बच्चों को अलग किया क्योंकि मुझे चार गुटों को अलग अलग तरीके से पढ़ाना था उनको आवश्यक सूचनाएं दी और छात्रों को कृति समझाई मैंने अलग अलग जगहों पर बिठाया नेक्स्ट मैम अब इसमें मैंने अलग अलग गुटों में विभाजित किया था इसलिए पहले गुट को मैंने सामान्य तौर पर जैसे हम हमेशा पढ़ाते हैं पारंपरिक हमारी पद्धति जो है उससे पढ़ाते हैं मुहावरे क्या है समझाना वाक्य में प्रयोग करवाना इतना ही लेकिन इसीलिए मुहावरे जो है उन्हें समझते हैं लेकिन उसका प्रयोग कहाँ करना कैसे करना ये समझ में नहीं आता तो इसीलिए मैंने दूसरे गुट को मुहावरों की कविता बनाई यहाँ मैंने पैटर्न रिकग्निशन इन पोइट्री जो है वो मैंने यहाँ इस्तेमाल किया ताकि लयात्मकता आए और बच्चों को वो कविता से आसानी से याद रहे और मुहावरे क्या है कैसे प्रयोग किया जाता है वो समझ में आए इसलिए तीसरे गुट को मैंने मुहावरे की कहानी बनाई यहाँ मैंने पैटर्न रिकग्निशन स्टोरी ये मैंने यहाँ पर इस्तेमाल किया और कहानी के जरिए मैंने मुहावरे उनको याद कराने की कोशिश की लेकिन यहाँ दोनों गुट को समझ में आ गए लेकिन मेरा उद्देश्य ये था कि समझ के उसका प्रयोग अच्छी तरह से हो जाए इसीलिए मैंने चौथे गुट को डिकम्पोजिशन की तरह से मैंने उनको अपने शरीर के अंग जो है उनके अलग अलग हमारे अंग जो है उसकी सूची बनाने के लिए कहा और फिर उसके आधारित जो मुहावरे हैं वो मैंने उनको समझाए तो जैसे हमारे सिर से पाँव तक हमारे जो अवयव है नेक्स्ट मैम तो हमारे अलग अलग अवयव जो है उसके ऊपर आधारित बहुत सारे मुहावरे हमारे हैं हमारे पास है हम आमतौर पर हमारी हिंदी भाषा बोलते हैं तो बहुत सारे मुहावरों का प्रयोग हर वक्त करते हैं तो आ, ये करते वक्त मुझे चुनौतियाँ बहुत सारी आई जैसे व्याकरण अगर पढ़ाना है कक्षा में तो अलग अलग तरीके अपनाने पड़ते हैं क्योंकि वही वही पद्धति जो है वो उसका प्रयोग नहीं करके चल सकता इसीलिए और छात्रों को गद्य और पद्य इसमें ज़्यादा इंटरेस्ट होता है व्याकरण पढ़ना बिल्कुल अच्छा नहीं लगता जिस तरह गणित उनको ऐसे विषय जो है वैसे व्याकरण लगता है इसीलिए थोड़ा सा इंटरेस्ट उनको व्याकरण पढ़ने में कम होता है और कक्षा में त्रयालीस बच्चे हैं इतनी सारी कक्षा के सामने एक संकल्पना समझाना थोड़ा सा कठिन हो जाता है छात्रों का लक्ष्य केंद्रित करना मुश्किल हो जाता है क्योंकि एक जगह पर लक्ष्य केंद्रित करके उन्हें समझाना मुश्किल होता है पर्याप्त समय का अभाव जो अभी भी मैं कर रही हूँ समय का अभाव जो है वो कक्षा में हमें बहुत होता है इसीलिए कोई भी संकल्पना ये करने के लिए बार बार रिपीटेशन करना पड़ता है समय काफ़ी देना पड़ता है पूर्व ज्ञान का अभाव यानी यहाँ पूर्व ज्ञान का अभाव इसलिए है कि छात्र अंग्रेज़ी माध्यम में जो पढ़ते हैं उनको उनके पास हिंदी शब्दों की बहुत कमतरता होती है बहुत शब्द उनको नहीं मालूम और ये कक्षा सातवीं है बहुत सारे स्कूलों में पाँचवीं से हिंदी लिया जाता है और कुछ सालों में पहली कक्षा से है तो वो ज़्यादा जानते हैं लेकिन जो नहीं जानते उनके पास शब्द भांडा भी नहीं होता है बहुत सीमित शब्द भांडार होता है और पूर्व ज्ञान का अभाव भी होता है इसीलिए मुहावरे जो है उन्हें समझाना थोड़ा मुश्किल हो जाता है नेक्स्ट मैम निरीक्षण अभी मैंने ये जो कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग का यहाँ प्रयोग किया तो मुझे ये समझ में आ गया कि छात्र जो मुहावरे हैं वो आसानी से समझ पाए क्योंकि मैंने विविध अंगों का प्रयोग करके वो उसकी सूची बना के मैंने किया इसीलिए यहाँ और पैटर्न रिकग्निशन और डिकम्पोजिशन की पद्धति से छात्रों को मुहावरे जो है काफ़ी अच्छे से समझ पाए कैसे याद रखना है ये भी वो समझ पाए और आधारित मुहावरों का प्रयोग छात्र बहुत ही आसानी से यानी वो भाषा जैसे ही कुछ बोलने लगेंगे तो वो तुरंत एक एक मुहावरे जो है वो जैसे नाग भौसी कोड़ना या 
आँखों का तारा होना ऐसे मुहावरे जो है वो आसानी से प्रयोग करने लगे क्योंकि शरीर के अंग तो हर एक के जो है तुरंत उनको दिमाग में आने लगे और वो उन्होंने तो उसका प्रयोग करना शुरू किया नेक्स्ट मैम उपक्रम का प्रभाव ये रहा कि मुहावरों की परिभाषा बच्चों को समझ में आई जो जो भाषा विशेष सामान्य अर्थ जो है प्रकट कर नहीं करते हैं बल्कि विशेष अर्थ प्रकट करते हैं बच्चों द्वारा तैयार की गई परिभाषा काफ़ी हद तक मिलती जुलती थी बच्चों की प्रयोगशीलता यहाँ पर नजर आई यानी मुहावरे कहाँ प्रयोग करना है ये उन्हें समझ में आ गए बच्चों को कुछ अलग सोचने का अवसर मिला और दो तीन चार से जो कॉम्पिटिशनल थिंकिंग का प्रयोग मैंने यहाँ किया था वो उससे मुहावरे बच्चों को ज़्यादा अच्छी समझ में नेक्स्ट मैम बाकी कक्षाओं में भी इस उपक्रम को लिया आठवीं कक्षा में जैसे सातवीं कक्षा में लिया वैसे आठवीं कक्षा में भी मैंने लिया और इस प्रकार का उपक्रम व्याकरण की समाज और कारक ऐसे इसमें भी हम प्रयोग कर सकते हैं यह पारंपरिक शिक्षा पद्धति से हटकर अलग है थैंक यू धन्यवाद थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू हिंदी के अभी एक कहानी है जैसे हमने अभी थैंक यू या एनी क्वेश्चन छात्रों को भी मौका मिलता है मुहावरे सीखने का कक्षा सेवन में जाहिर सी बात इंग्लिश मीडियम के बच्चे हैं तो उनके पास हिंदी का अभाव रहेगा समय का अभाव रहेगा पर हम एज ए टीचर्स ये चीज़ शो करेंगे तो अभी तो कुछ नहीं जो हमारे अधिकारी लोग होते हैं ना वो उसको एक्सक्यूज नहीं लेते हैं कि भाई आप लोगों के पास समय समय का कोई वो नहीं बनता ये तो लर्निंग प्रोसेस है अभी वो और बड़ी क्लास में जाएंगे तो हाँ लेकिन वही है, है कि अंगों अगर शरीर के अंगों से हाँ हमने करवाए या जैसे मैं और भी कहूँगी कि संख्या जो है हमारी गिनती है एक दो तीन चार इसमें भी बहुत सारे मुहावरे तो ऐसे अलग अलग प्रयोग हम करेंगे तो मुहावरे क्लास में हम पूरा मुहावरे तो सका ही नहीं सकते पूरे वही वही मुहावरे हैं इसीलिए तो अलग अलग प्रयोग से ही लेवल है उनका उतना ही समझाना पड़ता है थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच So with this, we come to the end of this uh, uh, session, CT and languages. Now I hand over the mic to Dipali. Good afternoon. Now uh, the next session coming up is on a CT and social science. We have two abstracts selected here. One is offline in person, and the other one is online. So I'll call upon uh, uh, Mrs. Karuna Galgale. and utsav banerji from school of course scholars anagpur hello good afternoon to respected dignitaries and my dear colleagues my name is utsav banerji i karuna galgale from school of scholars belsrodi gladly present the topic on political regimes around the world this was our subject enrichment activity which was performed by standard 10 student here 120 students were involved in this activity the main objective of this uh, activity was to identify uh, types of government and forms of government in this activity students uh, simplify this activity through city skills uh, such as Uh, uh such as uh, decomposition abstraction uh, pattern recognition through analyzing data mapping next slide, next slide. Huh. to implement this activity the students first was divided into groups each group of students were given sheets and through those sheets there was a countries that were mentioned then they collected data from about those particular countries like their political systems then power sharing structure the conduction of elections so their 
structures have been elected. Then, as you can see, they presented those information in PPT presentation. So in that way, they started to do decomposition about the nature of politics that were practiced in those respective countries, like in France, Britain, USA, China, and India. And after implementing this, they found out what are the types and various forms of government. Next slide. So there were few challenges which they face. And in that, the one of the challenges is that there were, there were a variation of data. Students uh, perform the uh, collected data and even they uh, presented this data uh, in front of all the students. So now they have all the five countries data. The problem was that ki they were unable to organize that data and then uh, through that organization they can do the analyzation. So that is why we required to give them such a set of questions which help them to abstract the data. So we use, uh, next slide please. So we use uh, abstraction through the questionnaire. So this is our questionnaire. In that we set uh, drafted questions. On that basis, students use attribute matrix. Madam, next slide. Student use attribute matrix and they fill this, um, uh, this uh, tab tabular form. And with this tabular form, then they uh, analyze the data. As you can see, in France, there were two heads of government. That is why it is a semi-presidential government, as both president and prime minister is the head of government in France. Whereas in Britain, as you can see, monarchy is appointing the prime minister. But monarchy is a nominal head, whereas prime minister is the real executive head of this country. So that is why it is a constitutional monarchy, it's a form of government. Then. In China, the president have all the powers concentrated in their hands. So, and since president is also not being elected by the people, that is why it is a form of dictatorship. In USA, the president is directly elected by the people. That is why it is a presidential government. Whereas in India, the members of parliament are elected by the people and no law can be passed without the approval of the majority of members from the parliament. That is why it is a parliamentary form of government that is being practiced in India. Students also find, uh, found out types of government through this abstract. In all four countries, we can see that power exercised by national assembly or the representative of the people. Whereas the next column uh, shows that ki all again, uh, all the four countries, they are equality before law. Whereas in China, communist party is above the law. So these two points help them to uh, came on the conclusion that uh, China is the undemocratic country, whereas all the four countries are democratic. So, in this way. So, next slide. So, in this way, as you can see, all the various forms of conclusion that they have done with various forms of government about the particular form that they have been practiced. Next slide. So, as we can see that uh, political science is a very difficult subject that students find it very difficult in the subject matter since it is always in a constant state of flux. So, it is always changing. So, today what we see is a democratic country, maybe in a future it can become a dictatorship kind of a country. What is a dictatorship kind of a country may become democratic kind of countries. So, it's always changing as well. And as you know, majority of the students don't watch news uh, most of the time, rather they will prefer movies or any kind of thing. So, that is why it is very essential for them to, in order to make them understand what type of a uh, what type of government that they follow. Since because of these problems, that is why we see that the students were started to do peer presentation as we have seen in this case as well. Because of this peer presentation, they were able to solve all those problems that they were facing, especially with the subject matter of political science. So in this way, through uh, city skills, the students are not only able to identify political system of various countries, but also to organize collected data through abstraction. So, uh, thank you all of you for listening us and we are uh, very grateful that Gita ma'am, Sonia ma'am and Kritika ma'am help us in this presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions? So 
how exactly are they collecting that data? What do we mean by collecting data? Are they reading articles, the newspaper? Uh, they have actually, um, as I've said, that they have given sheets, and through those sheets, they went to websites through Google's, and they have getting all the information. As okay. you know, in Google, there too much data; it is being there, and because of that, as Good we have a challenge as we have faced challenges in that so much data, so how to make them in a proper direction. So that is why we made that questionnaire, so that they get in a proper direction, because there was too much data in the Google, and from Google they have presented to that PPTs. Okay, all right, lovely, thanks. Thank you. Any more question? Uh, next, we have the stitched video. Uh, yeah, it's a single video, Neer Neerja, uh, from Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Gurukulam, Pathela, Pathetham. Good morning everyone. First of all, all thank you for CS Pathasala team giving me a chance to participate online presentation. My name is Neeraza Attada. My school name is Dr. B.R. Ambedkar Gurukulam Mandasa. District is Srikakulam in Andhra Pradesh state. Number of students involved in teaching computational thinking, 20 members. My topic name is Great Depression. The Great Depression was the worst economic crisis in modern history. of the industrialized world lasting from the stock market crashes of 1929 to 1939. Great Depression affects lower industrial productivity, fever wages, extreme unemployment, deflation, decline in global GDP, panic in the banking system, diminishing confidence of investors, etc. These effects are how to be affected by Great Depression in our Indian economy, immediate effect of Indian economy and Indian trade, colonial India was an importer of manufactured goods and exported agricultural goods. Prices in India also crashed. Effects of Great Depression and peasants across in India. Peasants' indebtedness increased across in India, etc. First of all, students are know the history of stock market crashes of 1929 to present corona crash. Uh, a stock market collapse typically occurs when the economy is overheated, inflation is rising, market speculation is rampant, and there is significant uncertainty about the path of economy. Students are understood the concept of Great Depression and also think and explore the concept whenever this type of situations how to face in future. After activity implemented by students are able to educational goals that aim to support students' full development and well-being in holistic and sustainable perspective. Sustainable development goals introduced in United Nations in 2015. Uh, goals are 17. Poverty, hunger, health and well-being, education, gender equality, water and sanitation, energy system, work and economic growth, industry and infrastructure, inequality, sustainable cities, consumption and production, climate change, water ecosystem, land ecosystem, institutional setting, partnership. After in, uh, introduced in sustainable goals in classrooms, introduced all the sustainable goals with the respective pictures and colors, introduced each goal with the meaning and aim. First of all, no poverty and end poverty in all its forms everywhere and hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Endure uh, good health and uh, well-being, enjoy health lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. Uh, 
quality education ensure inclusive and equitable quality education promote lifelong learning opportunities for all gender equality goal each achieve gender equality and empower and all women and girls um, clean water and sanitation will ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all ensure uh, ensure access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy for all decent work and economic growth promote sustained inclusive and sustainable economic growth full and productive employment and decent work for all industry innovation and infrastructure build resilient infrastructure promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization for foster innovation uh, reduce inequality aim reduce inequality within and among countries sustainable cities and communities make cities and human settlements inclusive safe resilient and sustainable responsible consumption and production goal ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns climate action um, take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts life below water conserve as sustainable use the ocean seas and marine resource for sustainable development a uh, life on land goal protect restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem sustainably manage forest combat deforestation desertification and halt and reserve land degradation and halt biodiversity loss peace justice goal 16 peace justice and strong institutions promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development provide access to justice for all and build effective accountable and inclusive institution at all levels goal 17 partnership to achieve the goal strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development these uh, sustainable development goals build an on over a decade of work participating countries after show the videos over the topic classroom discussion being an example of sustainable act to encourage the students students and parents participation for community and family bonding activities community our uh, outreach programs encourage students to create awareness posters help students to write blogs and articles for public and social media awareness children main activity implemented are ct skills used in sustainable development goals computational thinking forms links between computing and the real world including a set of problem solving process that builds on on the power and limits of computing the focus is on thinking skills or process and the four most commonly cited of computational thinking are decomposition pattern recognition abstraction and algorithmic thinking many social studies educators may realize that they are already fostering these thinking skills in their curriculum and with their student the following includes a breakdown of computing educational thinking skills as well as example of how they could be integrated into social studies curriculum the ct skills used in how to approach the social sustainable development in future effective land use and wildlife protection sustainable water uses supporting local and organic foods the use of sustainable transport zero waste and zero carbon creating own healthy environment discuss and practice recycling at home visit your local sustainable farm identify which things can do at home identify which things can uh, uh, do outside your house identify which things can do at work work side home air dry take short showers recycling paper plastic glass etc uh, outside your house bring your own bag when you shop do not what you don't use vaccinate yourself and your kids work buy skills walk or take public transport to work try to reduce waste since most waste end up in uh, in our oceans the impact of a future generation when sustainable development is used to help industries grow and adapt to new challenges it can provide protection for natural resources and increase the availability of minerals this for additional savings revenue growth and further economic development conclusion colleges and universities have a crucial role in equipping future leaders with the skills and knowledge required to bring about positive change stay fit and healthy and also keep your environment healthy computational thinking help increase students confidence with ambiguous complex or open ended problems it is then critical to teach student the vocabulary associated with computational thinking to support a deeper understanding of the thinking skills many social studies educator are naturally teaching computational thinking it may not be explicit thank you thank you one and all thank you neerja i think she is online if any any one of you want to ask question 
She is online there. Thank you, Neerja. No questions? Okay, then I call upon. Oh, she's. You have to unmute, Neerja. You are muted. Yeah. You want to speak? Yeah. Good afternoon, ma'am. First of all, all thank you for your CS Patsala team giving me a chance to participate on the presentation, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Neerja.